Welcome to Pharmacy View, technology and pharmacy business podcast series, where we provide regular interviews with pharmacists and key industry people within the Australian pharmacy and associated industry. In each podcast, we look to discuss aspects of pharmacy operation and how technology is improving or interacting with each guest's current role or pharmacy-related business. I'm your host, Scott Carpenter, and today's guest is sponsored by Shopfront Solutions, leading the way in digital marketing and communications, providing a cloud-based platform for pharmacies to manage all of their digital messaging and print-based collateral. For more information on the Shopfront Solutions digital platform, simply go to the website at shopfrontsolutions.com.au. I'm talking today with Dr. Ganesh Naidu, co-founder and CEO from MedMate. Welcome, Ganesh. Thanks very much, Scott. Great to be here. Oh, it's a pleasure having you on uh, today. And needless to say um, that I guess when we started talking about doing an episode around uh, MedMate, uh, a technology platform that makes the patient, doctor and pharmacy journey easy would have really found its ideal market in the last 18, 12 to 18 months, I would suggest. So talk to us about your journey. Um, where you've come from, what you've done, the inception of the product, and uh, I guess look forward to the chat. Thanks, Scott. Um, look, uh, you, you, you're correct. Uh, there's no doubt that the technology we've developed has become uh, vitally important uh, for Australians in the last 12 months or so. But uh, look, the, the story actually began a, a long time before COVID. Uh, we've been working on this problem for you know, a few years now, actually. Um, I'm a general practitioner. Um, I've worked in rural areas around the country, and um, I, I can't say that the idea came to us in, at any single point. Uh, it's probably probably something that formed, in my mind, as, as a problem uh, over many years and over many, many patient encounters. And um, I, I guess I can give examples of patients I was looking after in North Queensland that um, you know had uh, chronic medical conditions, uh, needed medications regularly, and and because of of their medical issues or their social circumstances, found it difficult to keep track of the medical appointments and uh, keep supply of their medications current. And so it always occurred to me that I was facing this this feedback and problem on a daily basis as a GP. Yet I could go home and pull up my mobile phone and order Uber Eats and have pizza yeah. right at my doorstep in 20 minutes. And yeah. it, it, it just seemed like an obvious problem that needed to be solved and solved it. Why can't it be as simple for patients to get the medications they need uh, when they need them? Um, we know it's not always going to be uh, an appropriate solution for patients that need um, you know, complex mm-hmm. medical counselling. That absolutely is always going to be a, a very important place for face-to-face uh, medicine and face-to-face pharmacy, but we know that a lot of patients, um, you know, have have times when it's going to be more convenient for them to have medications delivered, um, and it's for those purposes that we wanted to create the technology to empower yeah. uh, doctors and pharmacists to be able to provide this kind of service to the customers. Customer, yeah, and uh, I noticed in uh, part of your bio. Um, uh, I'm assuming post your, some of your early GP roles, you did some time with um, executive roles with Fullerton and Healthiers. Can you talk a little bit about that? Yeah, sure. Look, I, I guess I spent uh, a number of years thinking about networks, um, thinking about the problems that um, small business owners face and essentially medical centre owners and pharmacy owners generally are independent um, people that um, you know have really... Um, you know, laid it out in the line to own their own businesses. Um, and it's really hard. I've done it myself. I've, I've um, developed my own medical centres and um, my wife and myself, we, we ran them. And, you know, it's, it's really tough. You know, you don't get this kind of training uh, and how to run a business at, at medical school. No. So, um, yeah, so so my, um, you know, my roles, uh, I guess, uh, at Fullerton and Helios were to kind of take the experiences I had when I, I I learnt as, as a business owner and try and help other business owners um, you know, achieve the efficiencies that a large organisation like a Helios or a Fullerton can achieve while still maintaining the independence of the local medical centre. So um, it, it was trying to, I guess, consolidate uh, clinics together and provide them with uh, operating services that would make their uh, businesses more modern and more streamlined, more efficient, and um, overall provide a better, better service for their patients. 
from the outcome. No, that sounds great and, and certainly makes a lot of sense to me. So um, from the journey as you've described it, um, I saw this opportunity there. And from a technology point of view, I guess, how did you go about or, or what um, uh, processes did you employ to actually you know, look at you know, the conception of this um, platform? Yeah, look, it started with really humble beginnings, really. It's, it was myself, um, uh, my pharmacist mate, uh, Lyle Hanna, uh, who's a director of pharmacy, um, and uh, my other co-founders, Dilip Rounds and Sadia Rai, who are uh, technical and, and in operations. And we're basically getting together and saying, how, how could we do it? You know, how would it be possible to get a medicine to someone in 60 minutes? How, how would yeah. they order? How would you get it delivered? Now, it's actually quite complicated, um, and it was certainly very complicated when the only legal instrument for a prescription was a piece of paper. Yeah. And so when we started our journey, that was the status quo. The only way you could order something from a pharmacy that was a prescription medicine was a piece of paper which you had to get to the pharmacy. Um, to make a workflow work with that is, is very difficult. Um, and so one of the things we've been doing for the last uh, couple of years is working really closely with the Australian government around the rollout of electronic prescription technology mm -hmm. um, and we're a conformance application for e-prescriptions, uh, which means um, our technology can ex actually accept an electronic prescription um, you know, automatically and is able to help a customer use that to place an order online in a really simple manner with their local pharmacy. Yeah, and and again, um, <clears throat> to a point, um, you know, I I like to look into the future, and and really, um, the journey that you're on makes a lot of sense to me. But I, I certainly am aware that from a confidentiality, a privacy, um, an authoritative, um, and even a healthcare point of view, there has to be checks and balances all the way through. But the reality is, as you mentioned, you know, it, you you can get home from work, can't be bothered cooking, jump onto any of the the food delivery apps and have something delivered fairly quickly and, and of a reasonably good quality. Um, in, I'll say a semi unregulated environment. There are regulations, obviously, around food preparation and uh, and business in that arena. But certainly, the level of professionalism and regulation in pharmacy and and medical is a lot higher. And therefore, you've really had some pretty big barriers to jump over. And I think to be congratulated that you've you've uh, achieved that. And as you said, prior to COVID coming on board, but almost COVID has become the catalyst for this reality as it stands today. Because over a thousand pharmacies involved today. Is that right? Yeah, absolutely. We're, we're technically, inter, inter, technically integrated into a large number of pharmacies uh, all over the country. Uh, obviously, the, the major markets of, of Melbourne and Sydney, um, there's been a lot of activity uh, fuelled by COVID and lockdowns, but uh, we're delivering um, in Queensland, in Western Australia, or even, even in Hobart. Um, so, uh, you know, Australians all over the country uh, really value the convenience. And what, what I say to my team all the time is... Um, each of those orders has a story behind it. Yeah. Um, and um, I, I really want to start telling some of those stories. You know, we, we have instances where patients are in isolation in hotel qu quarantine and we're getting, you know, vital medication to them within 60 minutes. We've got um, family members ordering medication for um, their loved ones uh, on the other side of the country just by using the app and getting yeah. that product to them within 60 minutes. So there's all these use cases which are developing that um, our, our customers, I guess, are championing. Uh, now that they've got the ability to kind of find a pharmacy that is nearby to them and be able to order everything from a prescription medicine to, you know, Barocca or, you know, a front of shop product and get it to their doorstep in under 60 minutes, it's pretty remarkable. Um, I'll give you an example of telehealth, right? So, yeah. like, I can have a, a, a telehealth consult with someone um, and while I'm talking to them, issue them an electronic prescription, yep. um, lands on their phone via SMS while I'm talking to them, and uh, before the end of the consult, they've loaded it into MedMate and um, within the hours at the doorstep. And that's yep. remarkable stuff. Like, as a, as a GP, you know, I've, you know, I've been working around the country for a long time, that experience is uh, phenomenal, like it's never been seen before. So it's it's very very um, cool stuff that's, that's happening. Yeah. And and look on the basis that there's a broad range of listeners to this podcast, um, uh, certainly whilst predominantly pharmacists, um, uh, some medical practitioners. Um, could you describe some of the barriers as to where at the moment? Uh, I'm not saying like forever, but at the moment there would be some instances where um, whether it's a, a product or a um, a service that, that it couldn't be used, but, but potentially will be in the future? 
I think I think probably the first thing is to talk about electronic prescriptions and um, how they're being adopted by Australians. Um, there have been 23 million electronic prescriptions issued to date, um, and the growth uh, of eScripts is exponential. Mm-hmm. Um, we expect the adoption of eScripts to uh, approach uh, 90% of, of script uh, volume uh, within you know, 12 to 18 months. Um, okay. if, we, if we look at other examples, other markets uh, like the United Kingdom, uh, the UK has had eScripts for about five years or so now, um, and um, they've, they've now hit 90% adoption. Of, they're above that now. Um, and the vast majority of uh, customers in, in the UK do order online for a, a lot of a lot of their essentials. So we, we see that as being something that, as adoption uh, of eScripts yeah. grows, you're going to see more volume come through the system. Um, but look, the the, the, big, the big barriers, I guess, from our perspective, are one edu- educating customers. Um, doctors and pharmacists, that there is this technology available, yep. that you have got a solution, uh, particularly for telehealth. Um, telehealth, you know, it doesn't make a lot of sense to have a telehealth consult with the doctor and then the doctor say to you, oh, by the way, you now have to get in your car and drive to a pharmacy. Yeah. Um, you know, presumably you've had a telehealth consultation for a reason. Uh, you couldn't get to the doctor. Yeah. So uh, that's probably an immediate education piece that we need to get out there and say, you know what, you know, you can have the whole solution now with the customer sitting in their home. Um, the other barriers we face are really just being able to to get this service scaled out to as many Australians as possible. Um, our, our delivery systems are largely in metro areas at the moment, yeah. um, and we're, we're trying to work on solutions where uh, we can get products uh, hopefully uh, nearly as quickly as, as metro regions uh, to, to rural and regional customers. It's possible, yeah. And look, certainly if I go back uh, to middle of last year when, um, you know, the, the, I guess the first wave of COVID on the eastern seaboard particularly was really kicking off, you know, there were a lot of uh, freight logistics organisations quite happy to jump in and support this whole platform and program. And I've got to say that for a period of time, certainly possibly through until about you know two or three months ago, I think the Australian Freight and Logistics Network really stepped up and lifted its game. But it was almost like, um, I think, Father's Day this year, the panic button seemed to get hit. And, and it's a real catch. I know even you know, from our household, you know, we're still waiting on some deliveries you know, for, from, that are probably six weeks old now, but things that we've ordered last week from other locations have turned up quicker. So is, is that a, a, a challenge for you guys or, or is it pretty much OK at the moment? Uh, n- network volume and capacity uh, can be an issue at times. And, and, and in our high volume uh, periods, particularly after hours and, and weekends, uh, we, we can get some delays. Uh, yeah. we, we do, even though this is an electronic uh, ordering system, we do have quite a, a significant order management team that works with uh, both the customer and the pharmacy to make sure that the order is coordinated. Um, because often it's our logistics partners that may be held up for whatever reason. Yeah. Uh, the driver may uh, may have been cancelled, uh, you know, unexpectedly for some reason, um, you know, during a surge period. So, uh, our promise to the customer is we will get that medicine to you in 60 minutes. So, yeah. our job is to make sure that we find an alternative driver and, and get that to them. Um, so, it is challenging at times. Um, we're seeing a, a lot of volume coming through the system now. Yeah. Um, and, uh, you know, just, just meeting that demand in peak periods. Um, like yes, yesterday was Melbourne Cup and, um, <laughs> yeah. in, in Melbourne, and it was, it was uh, very difficult uh, for us to, to meet the demand that came through yesterday. At that point in time. And again, yeah. I, I go back to uh, a, a podcast I did last year um, with a pharmacist, uh, Tim Shelton, who spoke about Amazon and his experience with Amazon in the US and, and how... You know, again, this was 12 months ago, probably just as COVID was kicking off. And, and he was, you know, I guess, talking to us about the fact that he was in the US. He was at a barbecue. The host was talking about a particular product who jumped on their phone, ordered it. And before that actually even, you know, left for the day, that product was delivered. And, and the reality is that 12 months ago in Australia, that was pretty much unheard of. But certainly, as I said, and I, and I don't mean this as a negative because I think, you know, the, the Australian freight and logistic companies have done a significant amount of work behind the scenes to, to really take up this um, opportunity. And, and I think they've done a really, really good job. Um, I guess, as you've said or indicated, is that it's a, it's a whole package, which includes the delivery at the end of the day. So there's one thing to have the telehealth appointment, have the electronic script written, you know, the, the consumers then select their pharmacy pharmacist team needs to actually then dispense 
package, get it to the the delivery driver to to get to the you know, to the patient's home. And again, at the end of the day, the sixty minutes is important, but the patient's health is the ultimate care goal, isn't it? And that's really what this is about. So, hundred percent, and and that that's why we we've, we've you know really uh, pride ourselves that we're actually. A healthcare organisation. Yeah, you know, we're, we're led by healthcare professionals. I'm a GP, and we have pharmacists on our team as well. So, we have the knowledge to be able to assist a customer with an order. So, if if something happens, you know, pharmacy is out of stock, um, they're unable to supply that particular product. It's um, 11 o'clock at night. Uh, you know, we we can work with that with that patient. Uh, if necessary, we'll even conduct a telehealth consultation with them to try and find an alternative. Um, solution for the medical issue that they're experiencing. We will make sure we find a pharmacy supplier uh, that's able to get that product to them uh, quickly. Yeah. Um, so, it, you know, there are a lot of moving parts. You're 100% right. <laughs> um, and look, you know, when you're talking about barriers before, probably one of the biggest, uh, you know, hurdles we're facing is uh, just educating pharmacists that, you know, these, these online customers are, are just as important as your face-to-face customers. Yeah. Um, and we, we need to treat them the same way. So if someone walked into your store and handed you a script to dispense, you know, you would provide great customer service to getting mm. that script to them um, you know, as quickly as you can. Um, we need to have that same mentality with online orders. Uh, just because they've come through an ordering system, they, they, they still need that medicine. You know, these are urgent medicines that they are, they yep. are ordering. They're in pain or they've got mental health issues. Uh, for whatever reason, they're ordering online. So, um, you know, kind of treating online orders, I guess, uh, as a secondary um, a system to your face-to-face, um, I think that's probably the mentality we're trying to change is, yep. hey, uh, we need to help you work in your workflow in, st- in store yes. so that you're able to deal with both those strands. Because I know that's difficult from an ops perspective. Yeah. Um, you know, you've got people in front of you and you've got online orders coming in. How do I prioritise these things? Um, and we're working with... Um, I guess our tech teams and also some of the dispense uh, systems to kind of work out how do we queue these orders in a way that you can, um, I guess, action them in a time efficient manner. In manner, yeah. And 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 again, that, you know, it's a it's a classic example is that whether it's a face to face customer interaction with a business or whether it's an online um, interaction with the business, we're both consumers. Listeners today are consumers, and if you have a great um, experience, then you've got a lot of confidence then to continue on with it. But if you don't have a great experience the first time, second, third time, I, I certainly have a bit of a third, you know, third strike you're out ruling. But but again, I, I, I'd be pretty confident with your um, business intent that it's not the way it's going to happen. But again, it's about confidence, as you've said. If if the pharmacy team is confident that it can work, if the patient is confident that it can work, then really, it's it's the new business that you can't ignore effectively. Absolutely. And it's, it, it's all about communication. Um, you know, we, we, we say to our, our pharmacy partners that, you know, pick up the phone, have a chat. Uh, you know, if you haven't got a product or you need to talk about an alternative or you need to provide medication counselling, you know, we, we provide all uh, the contact details necessary for that patient. So um, as you would with someone in store, have a talk to them. If, if you're getting slammed and, you know, the order's going to be a bit delayed, have a talk to them. You know, yeah. um, I can tell you 99% of the time that the customer's really happy. You know, that someone's called them and said, hey, we're getting really slammed. You know, it might be an hour and a half instead of an hour, uh, but don't worry, we're getting it to you. Yeah. Um, that, that's what we need to do. And, and that customer, we really appreciate that contact and we know comes back to that pharmacy. Um, yeah. And that's, that's the important thing is this, this is being able to reach customers you've never had before. They, it's about reaching customers that are outside outside of your local catchment um, that may not have ever walked into your bricks and mortar store, all of a sudden they're just shopping with you online. So if you provide a great customer service, they'll come back. And we're definitely saying that. Yeah, and, and look, on that note too, I'm, I'm certainly aware of two of the um, 24-hour pharmacies here in Melbourne. Um, it, it's not the same example, but it's a similar example in that um, they put a lot of time and effort with the team and the management planning and the whole business model about going to the 24-7. And one of the benefits that I'm aware in both cases is that they're getting customers and patients coming into them out of hours that they've never seen before 
that then become regular customers. Like um, I know I've used this example before. Um, I, I drive past 30 other pharmacies to, to get to my pharmacy, which actually happens to be one of these 24-7 um, super chem um, mm. because they provide a great service. And again, that's that's the rationale there is that um, if you continue to do that on, on all facets, not just face-to-face but online as well, then, then you actually will get that continued and repeat business from that perspective. Um, mm. Ganesha, so if there's a pharmacist listening today, you know, I've no doubt they've heard about MedMate. The the marketing that you, you guys have uh, have done has been exceptional. But as you said, you know, there's still opportunity for take up. So what what's the journey for a pharmacist? So someone listening today says, you know, I've heard about it. It's probably something I should really look into. I'm going to jump on the website, or I'm going to give them a call, or I'm going to put an inquiry form. What 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 would they expect the process for them to go through from from that stage, from that in con- from that contact? Yeah, look, it, it, it's it's pretty straightforward. I guess uh, the important thing we we'd like to make clear is. Uh, we're agnostic. Uh, we're not tied to any particular group or brand or, or whatever. So w- we've developed this technology to be a tool for every pharmacy in the country. Yeah. Um, so everyone is welcome to join. And um, it's a pretty straightforward process. Uh, you can fill in a very, really short questionnaire online. We're just trying to learn about um, how much uh, business you're doing for eSpritz and how we can help you. Um, and then from there, one of our team will contact uh, you. Uh, it's really a 24-hour process to get the pharmacy set up. Uh, we set up pharmacies with their own catalogue, so their own range. Yep. Uh, you're able to receive your own uh, product prices for for your products. Um, and you're able to customise um, that that pharmacy experience, you know, to your store. So you don't have to have express delivery. That's the other thing I want to make sure you okay. understand. That, you know, if you're a pharmacy that's in a regional area and we, we don't have express uh, coverage there, you know, most pharmacies already have delivery services, right? Correct. So we're, we're happy to uh, collect uh, the delivery uh, fee for the pharmacy for that order and we pass that on 100%. Yeah. Uh, to the pharmacy, so they utilise that to fund their own delivery service. So just to think about MedMate as a tool to digitally enable your pharmacy. So overnight you can turn a bricks-and-mortar store into an e-commerce-powered uh, um, you know, superstore uh, <laughs> yeah. just, just by having a chat to one of our team and getting set up. Yeah, so I, I take it from that um, uh, discussion then, so you're integrated with all of the major dispensary systems here in Australia? Yeah, that's that's correct. We're definitely working with with all the the major dispense systems. Uh, so particularly people like uh, Fred, um, and we're working with them in the dispense queue. So um, you know, from a MedMate order, you actually action a MedMate order in a uh, portal. It's a, it's a very mm-hmm. secure online portal. Yep. Dead simple. You just uh, the orders come in paid. Uh, so all you have to do is essentially accept the order, um, and process it. If it's got a script, that script will actually fall directly into your dispense queue. Yes. Uh, so you actually you know, to do do what you normally do. So we've made it as simple as possible. Um, you know, our, our really strong performing pharmacies are actioning orders within the first five minutes, having it packaged within 15, um, and uh, it's at the customer's doorstep within 50 minutes. Yeah, and, and look, certainly... Yeah, if we look at the um, South East Australia, so New South Wales, ACT and Victoria, which has you know been in and out of, um, of lockdown, so that you know, the, the potentially you're not getting customers necessarily in for the front of the shop. I'm not saying that pharmacies aren't busy because they, they are busy, but again, it's really the, then the redeployment of potentially your front of shop staff to help with this area as well, your dispensary technicians, etc. whether it's, as you said, making the call to say, hey, look, just letting you know, yeah, we've got your order, um, you know, we're going to do everything we can to get it to you there in the 60 minutes, but the reality is within the current environment, it, it might be 10 or 15 minutes, but you know, we'll let you know straight away. Do, yep. Does the, the patient get uh, a bit like the Uber delivery? Does the, does the patient get a delivery notification that it's on its way? Oh, absolutely. So they're, they're yeah. notified the whole way. So as soon as they place the order, they yeah. get an order notification. They can actually track the order. So you can okay. actually uh, see uh, see the uh, you know where the delivery driver is picking up the order, okay. coming all the way to your house. So um, and if there's any issues, our order team is actually in constant contact with the customer. So if we can see a pharmacy hasn't picked up an order within the first eight minutes, we're actually on the phone to the pharmacy. So yeah. uh, you know. We've made a promise to the customer. We want to get that medication to them, so we do our very best to make sure the pharmacy has has seen it and is, is actioning it. So um, the customer is informed uh, the whole way from that. And and I might just uh, jump back to what you said before: is that obviously yes, within the major metropolitan areas, you would want this to be the sixty minute delivery because if you're not delivering that within the sixty minutes, potentially someone else would be. 
But mm. outside of the major metro areas, there is the option, regional areas, for that to be on a on a local um, delivery schedule. And again, I'm I'm working on the basis that it's, we're not saying a two or three day delivery into regional areas unless it's far remote, you know, properties or something like that. Um, but certainly within regional areas, they can take. If they were to talk to you, they they could take up the option of a of a non express delivery. Um, Absolutely, I think we, we we've got some pharmacies in areas like Albany and Bundaberg and okay. um, who uh, we don't I don't think we have express there yet. So um, they they are uh, utilising our system. Interestingly, the other product that we have is um, not only being on the MedMate application itself. We can actually embed the MedMate application into your own website. So okay. if you're a pharmacy and um, you either have uh, a simple website or don't have anything at all, we can actually set you up with a branded website for your pharmacy. Okay. And our ordering system actually sits in there um, as a like a plug-in. Yes. Um, and so from the customer's perspective, if they go to that website, they can just order online as, as, they, as they think they're shopping with that, that pharmacy. Um, and um, that pharmacy will be using their own delivery services to get that product to to the door, to, doorstep. To you, yeah. Look, that's uh, been really good. We're we're coming to the end of our time, but it's been a really really good chat. And I'd obviously like to stay in touch into the the future and see what else you've got coming up. But is there any other key points that we haven't discussed that were on your list? I think the only other thing I'd like to mention, Scott, is I know we've talked a lot about pharmacy today, but the MedMate platform actually is about digitally enabling uh, the entire primary healthcare yes. uh, experience. And so uh, a lot of what we do is actually around the electronic referral space. So we're working with a lot of, um, of large uh, radiology organisations, for example. So okay. now when you go to a, a doctor and uh, you, that, you, know, you need to get an X-ray, uh, you get that electronically now through a MedMate process. Um, yep. And that uh, goes directly to the radiology provider and you can make a booking online um, and that's that's growing at a very rapid rate as well so we just see a world uh, you know not too not far away where now when you go to a doctor everything happens electronically everything yeah. happens instantly there's no more pieces of paper floating around and it's really easy for patients to navigate the, the system yeah and, and look certainly from my perspective that makes a whole lot of sense so so again as a as a a doctor's patient, I'm not walking out with a script and then going to try and find an appointment somewhere. This is potentially all done for me. What am I going to do with all my spare time, Ganesh? Like... <laughs> Shopping the like a pharmacy, Scott. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> or, or fitness and products. fitness, yeah, fitness and health. <laughs> um, that's been really great to chat today. Thank you very much for your time. I, I really appreciate you coming on, and, and I uh, would I hope that our listeners have really enjoyed this uh, session today. Thank you, Scott. It's been a pleasure, and I uh, look forward to talking again soon. Will do. Thank you for listening today. Pharmacy View is a technology-focused podcast provided by Melbourne-based business Arian Technologies and Shopfront Solutions. Over the podcast series, our guests include pharmacists, retail managers, wholesalers, suppliers, and industry technology partners. If you would like further information on our podcast series or to participate in one of our episodes, feel free to send me a message or touch base through the Pharmacy View website, pharmacyview.com.au.